My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to a special Miami edition of Mad Money, coming to you from the amazing Telemundo Center. Other people, one of my friends, I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just entertain, but to educate, teach. Call me at 1-800-743-CBC. Tweet me, at Jim Kramer, nicely, please. Breathless. I am kind of breathless. This morning, the Labor Department reported that our country created over a half million jobs last month. Do you know that's more than twice what anyone was expecting? These num numbers upended the entire thesis that a recession is just around the corner. Even though this is supposed to be a good news is bad news market, we ultimately didn't get hit that hard. Dow dipped 128 points, S&P declined 1.04 percent, and Nasdaq lost 1.59 percent. You know what? Given how bullish this market has been, how much it's gone up, I think that's a remarkably shallow decline. <laughs> This kind of number gives the Fed more leeway to keep raising interest rates without choking us off. But, man, if the economy could create a half million jobs last month, what a country. It's hard to see that getting derailed by another quarter point rate, uh, rate hike could possibly happen. It's not. But like I've been saying over and over, we are now in bull market mode. You can see it in the strength of stocks that reported so-called downside surprises. I, this one really probably, it probably really flummoxed you. Witness the stock of Apple. This is the largest company in America. It reported weaker than expected numbers last night. Absolutely, unequivocally. Yet after initially opening down, it then rallied furiously. The stock finished up nearly four bucks for heaven's sake. Largest company, how about that? So with the market's newly forgiving attitude in mind, what's up for my game plan next week? All right, Monday morning starts with a company that's extremely intensive to inflation. It's called Tyson Foods, TSN. If you want to know when we're going to see inflation relief at the supermarket, well, Tyson's the one that can tell us. This is a must-listen-to conference call. Can't buy, buy it yet, though. Can't touch it. Too much disappointment over and over and over again. After the close, we get Simon Properties. Hey, you know, we're down in South Florida. A day after our college tour trip to the University of Miami, we're coming to you from the fantastic Telemundo Center, and I talked to business school kids, and a bunch of them were interested in the real estate investment trust. Surprising. You usually don't get those kinds of questions. Usually it's all about crypto. I said it's a tough... Well, because these kids are smart. They know not to ask about nothing but crypto. I said it's a tough time for many in the office property business, given the rise of remote work and the enclosed mall plays don't seem like anything to write home about. We know there's a lot of problems with, with the retailers. So can Simon Properties, the largest mall, re, 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 cut it? You know, it's hard to say. But these are real smart guys. They may pull a rabbit out of a hat, but they give one heck of a conference call. We will learn about that business for certain. We're hosting an investment club meeting in Miami tomorrow. We'll run through all the stocks we own for the Chapel Trust. And one of the most interesting one is Lindy, L-I-N-D-E, the industrial gas company. And that's, nat that's natural gas, not gasoline. They just announced that they'll be increasing their exposure to hydrogen in California, which tells me that hydrogen fuel cells might actually have a chance. Maybe they're more viable than we think. I'm looking for a nice quarter when they report Tuesday morning. Stock really got clubbed today, though. After the close Chipotle reports, and given that they're hiring 15,000 people for something called burrito season, I've got to believe that business is phenomenal. I know the stock's expensive in this year's earnings estimates, but I think those estimates are too low. Many people call in, and they ask about Enphase Energy because it makes the inverters, it converts the solar energy captured by solar panels and transforms it into usable electricity. Really cool. I always say the same thing. If you believe that solar can be even bigger than it is now, then Enphase is the right stock for you. This is a winner. We've liked it for a while. Hey, lots of people are asking me, why has CVS Health become a real bow wow? I mean, like, just, just disappointing. Well, it's not the company. It's what we call the COVID hangover. Stocks that do poorly because the year-over-year -year comparisons can't be beaten. We had too many vaccine seekers turn shoppers last year. But maybe there's another reason. In particular, do they have the staff? Can they afford the staff? Because you know you need a lot more people these days because so many items are under lock and key. Yeah, you know, just to get a razor, just to get shampoo. I want to know how much it's costing them. That may be the focus. That may be the problem. And so is pilferage, which is a fancy word for stealing. 
Also on Wednesday, we'll hear from young brands if they're like Brinker, they'll have good same store sales figures, but also some concern about sticker prices being too high. That's what Brinker told us earlier in the week. I think young could do better on the strength of KFC, Taco Bell, and Pizza Hut. Reasonably priced places. After the close, we have one of the most exciting earnings affairs ever. It's Disney's quarterly report. This one marks the triumphant return of Bob Iger, former CEO, who took over as current CEO after his successor was unceremoniously fired, in part because the last quarter was so terrible. Iger hasn't really had a chance to breathe yet, but I bet things will return to some sort of normalcy under his leadership because it was normal when he was there. We've owned Disney for the Chapel Trust, and our position got obliterated. Remember, I always tell you the good ones and the bad ones. It got obliterated by previous management. I think happier days are here again, and we're holding on, and no longer for dear life. Thursday morning, we hear from Abvi. That's Big Pharma. Recently, there's been some negative press about the high-handed way these guys went about protecting the price of Umira. That's their best-selling drug for all sorts of uh, autoimmune diseases. Really, really tough stuff. And it does a good job, Umira. AbbVie's finally lost exclusivity after years of fighting off generics that would have crushed their gross margins. That game is over with. Now they got to deal with the consequences of losing patent protection for their top junk. Let me tell you something. If management actually addresses what business will look like without Umira's hefty price tag, I got to tell you, if they're forthcoming, I think the stock will actually go down and maybe even go down a lot. I just don't know if AbbVie's got enough to offset that newfound lack of patent protection for the big, one of the biggest drugs in history. When we get a commodities collapse as we had today, I always want to reach for the packaged goods stocks because you can see the raw costs declining in real time. Typically, though, these stocks can't get much lift unless the economy is deteriorating because that's when Wall Street appreciates their consistency. But how can we say it's deteriorating if 500,000 people got hired? And that's just in land one month. That's why I worry about the stock of PepsiCo, which reports Thursday. You know what? I actually think they will deliver good numbers on Thursday. But if we have a growth hangover, it might not matter to the market. Remember, Pepsi is a great company, but it can report a quarter that people actually don't like because of the macro data. After the close, we hear about the, from the highly controversial PayPal. And that's controversial because it used to dominate the online payments business. And now the field has gotten so crowded. I mean, it's just like everybody's in it. And their margins are getting hurt. Earlier this year, PayPal laid off, se- or just early this week. Yeah, it was like the beginning of the week. Oh, boy, I'm like having too good a time there. Earlier this week, PayPal laid off 2,000 people or 7% of its staff in a bid to cut costs. You don't do that if you're feeling good about your earnings. Hey, by the way, we just found out that the fastest growing part of Apple's juggernaut services division is the finance business, including payments. Well, you know, that's gonna be a fierce competitor. Who needs PayPal when Apple Pay is built into your phone? I use it. We also got an analyst meeting. So it's from a company called Aero Environment. I don't know if you remember, we had them one recently. Uh, They make drones for the military. They've got thousands ready to go for the Ukrainian army. Thousands! But our government doesn't seem inclined to pay for them. These, too bad. These drones are far more efficient and safer than anything else in the defense arsenal. I hope management can explain what went awry here. Speaking of going awry, the pipeline business has lost its way thanks to the administration's less-than-friendly attitude toward oil and gas. And that has hammered the stock of Enbridge, fabulous Canadian pipeline operator, 6.5% yield. I like these guys. Pay out back by bountiful cash flow. But when they report Friday, we need to know the state of play on natural gas, a fuel that seems to be headed below two bucks. Wow, how'd that happen? It's just collapsing. We swing wildly from not enough to way too much natural gas. It's just a nightmare for the producers, but fabulous for creating disinflation, Jay Powell's new favorite term. Finally, new brands. You remember the old new rubber made? Ports Friday, it's been engineering a very compelling turnaround. Will continue. Can it be sustained? Or should we just hold on maybe that beautiful dividend, 5.7%? Seems like a reasonable proposition. Bottom line, I don't know if we can continue this week's bizarrely bullish behavior, but it's worth sticking around. And maybe I'll give you one. You can trim a bit of some stock that you're up a lot. We're going to be talking about that with the members of the CNBC Investing Club. If you did, all I can say is congratulations. You've battled all the bears prognosticators, and you've won. Let's go to Jerry in Missouri. Jerry. Hey, Jim. I'm a club member and I uh, wanted to ask you a question about this rental car giant. I purchased a sure. position in the company when it was in bankruptcy. When it came out, I was awarded common shares and warrants. I'm thinking about adding to my investment because it's down quite a bit. 
but I want your opinion if you still like this company, and that is, should I buy one, the shares or the warrants, uh, or does it matter? Uh no, it doesn't matter. I care about the fundamentals. Don't care about the actual. Uh, what what what's the stock to be saved at the beginning? Is, I apologize. The stock is Hertz. Oh, okay. Uh, what matters here is this, and I recently had a, a question about this. The car, you know it's getting really expensive to rent a car, and I think there being people who say it costs too much money, and I'm not going to do it. That's my biggest worry. That said, it's run by Steve Schur. I know when he was the CFO of Goldman Sachs, he's a real good businessman. If anybody's going to be able to pull a rabbit out of the hat, it's going to be him. But I am worried. Some things are getting too expensive in this country, and I don't like it. Look, I don't know if we can continue this week's bizarrely bullish behavior, but it's worth sticking around and maybe trimming a bit if you own a lot of stock coming in or may have, may have money tonight. I'm going to be talking about this stuff. We have a debt crisis in the U.S., but why does it seem like nobody's worried about it? I'm breaking down the situation, laying out what you need to know about it. Then you called in and stumped me on Farfetch and Origin Materials. So I did work on it. I'm turning my homework tonight. And ELF surged after big earnings beat. What a stock! So what drove the strength this quarter? I'm talking to the company's top brass. So stay with Kramer! Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.